snowstorms, and clothes rows, and groceries. Oh, oh my. my! Welcome to week two of the February Grocery Challenge, where all month long we are talking to you about how to save money while feeding your family, and we're delving a little bit and how to use that extra money in order to stock your emergency pantry shelves. You know, this week we battled bad oh weather gosh. and empty shelves and just hordes of panic buying. <laughs> so we were a little bit limited in what we could find at the store, but we're gonna show you what we did find, and we're gonna help you out when you have a large amount of quantity of one item or maybe two to feed your family and feed them in such a way that they don't feel like they're eating the same thing over and over. And then I'm going to reveal one super critical mistake that I made when planning our weekly menu plan. And it's a cautionary tale, so you will not do the same thing I did, so make sure that you stick with us. Hi, I'm Larry. And I'm Hope. And in case this is the first time you've watched us, we talk about practical frugality on this channel. Before we get into this week's grocery haul, we had three super quick questions from viewers regarding last week's video, and we're going to answer them real fast. Okay, so Marlene asked, in last week's video, when you were figuring out the cost mm -hmm. of the meal, you counted the cost of some items from your pantry. Yeah. Why? If you already have them, why would you need to add them to the cost of items? Because this series, Marlene, really isn't about what I spend at the grocery store. I'm including what I get in my weekly grocery haul to show you like the base ingredients I have to plan the menu. But the menu itself, I want to give you a super good idea of what it really costs my family to feed them breakfast, lunch, and dinner for seven days. So in order to do that, I'm including the overall average cost of the ingredients that I grab from the freezer, from the pantry, from other areas of my home that I use to create that menu plan. So that gives you a really good overall idea of exactly what I spent on the weekly menu. So the whole idea was Hope wanted to show exactly what we paid for in the items we purchased at the store and what we had on hand in order to try to keep the budget under $50 a week. Right. Several people asked for the rice salad recipe from last week's menu plan. Now, first of all, if you haven't watched that video and you're a little confused about what rice salad we're talking about, we're gonna make sure that that video is linked up above and in the description of this video. So I showed this great rice salad I made and I received several questions from people saying, tell me where I can find that recipe. Guys, I made it up as I went along. <laughs> Truly, there was no recipe, but because so many of you asked, before the challenge is over at the end of the month, I will rebuy the ingredients that I used in the rice salad recipe. I will remake that recipe, this time paying actual attention to what I put in said rice salad recipe. And I will make sure that sometime before the end of the month that you have access to that, I'll write it up, I'll put it on the website, and I'll make sure that you get a link to it. I'll make sure she writes it down as she <laughs> Thank goes. Thank you. <laughs> Well, a number of viewers asked us if we buy all organic when we go shopping. The answer is no. And somebody said, how important is that to you? It is far more important to us that we buy single ingredient, whole plant-based foods than it is that we buy organic. Now, having said that, you'll see throughout this month's challenge, I do get quite a bit of organic food but it's because our very, very favorite ethnic grocer in town happens to stock a lot of organic produce at an incredibly low price. But the long and short of it is, if I can find organic at a price I can afford, I buy it. If I can't, I go with the next best thing, which is the actual single ingredient whole food product. Now, in case you missed last week's show, we had a major snowstorm. In yes, fact, we, we, we had about 10 <laughs> inches of snow that blanketed the whole Peoria area, completely shutting down the town for about two days. There were very few people out. So we were really concerned when we went to the store mm -hmm. on Friday, and that was only the third day after the snowstorm, whether we were gonna be able to find anything or whether the shelves would still be totally empty. empty. Yeah. Let's take a look at this week's grocery haul. If you were watching last week, you know a major snowstorm hit our area, closed down the whole town on Wednesday and Thursday. I honestly was not sure when we went to the store tonight if I was going to find anything on the shelves of the grocery store, but we did pretty well. 
The first store was Aldi. I was able to get two two pound bags of carrots at Aldi and I grabbed some ketchup while I was there. I actually got these items on Tuesday, just about eight hours before the snowstorm hit. The total from Aldi's $4.72. Now let's take a look at what we did get tonight when we went on Friday evening. First place that we headed tonight, which was Friday night, was Kroger. We were able to find this classic garden salad mix. It was marked down to $1.49 and it is, let me see here, 24 ounces. We got two of these on markdown. Now, the other thing that Kroger had this week, which I thought was a super good deal, was baking potatoes. Russet baking potatoes, five pound bags of russets. They were uh, a special deal. You needed to put the coupon for these on your shopper's card in order to get the deal. Uh, when you did that, you got each of the five pound bags and it was $1.47 per bag, meaning that you're getting 10 pounds of potatoes for under $3 for 10 pounds, which actually is a really good deal. I got four five pound packages. Now, clearly, 20 pounds of potatoes is going to last us longer than a week, but next week the potatoes aren't gonna be on sale. So I went ahead and stocked up while I was there. The total at Kroger was $8.95. The last store we headed to was the Mediterranean Mart so we could see what our buddy Saeed had in stock for us this week. I was super excited about the first thing. These are huge and I do mean huge green peppers. I'm gonna put it in my hand so you can see how big it is. This is one of the green peppers. Each of these green peppers, $1.39. And 39 cents. So I got four of them. Three of them I deliberately tried to get about the same size and shape because these green peppers are perfect for stuffing and then baking them. This green pepper, I haven't quite decided exactly what I'm going to do with it yet, but this is a huge green pepper, gives us a lot of possibilities throughout the week. He also had, this is organic romaine lettuce. Each of these romaine lettuces was just 99 cents each. Moving along, these Aroma Tomatoes, 99 cents a pound, not too bad. And we got two pounds of the Roma Tomatoes. Now up here, we got this right on our way out the door. Saeed said, hey, would you like to try these? And he let us try one of them. They taste an awful lot like vanilla wafers. Uh, these were on sale, three packages for $1. Now this week, I'm going to try to incorporate a dessert into the menu plan because we got these great little cookie crackers. So I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm, I'm sort of picturing them lying on the bottom of a pan and then covered maybe with some homemade vanilla uh, vegan pudding, uh, but we're gonna play around with it and then I'll show you what I come up with when I show you the menu plan. Really this week's menu plan is going to be all about what you do when you don't have a lot of things that you got at the store, but you have some ingredients you have a lot of, like these potatoes. So clearly potatoes are going to be featured on the menu this week. But what I'm going to do is show you how to feature potatoes on your menu without serving the same dish every single night so your family feels like all they're really eating all week is potatoes. So that's what we're gonna focus on for the menu this week. How much did we spend at the Mediterranean Mart? $10.40. What did we spend all together for this grocery haul? For all three stores, it came out to $24.07. So that leaves us lots of headway to grab some things off the shelf of the pantry and the freezer that we already have in stock in the house and still stay well within our $50 weekly budget for feeding our family a four for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So how do you plan a menu when all you have as the main ingredients is carrots, potatoes, and green peppers? So you don't want your family to feel like the only thing you are feeding them over and over again is potatoes and carrots right. and, and green pe peppers. Oh my. That's right. And so what I want to challenge you to do is think about those three ingredients in terms of different ways that you can use them. So literally, take a piece of paper and I want you to write across one side of the paper. You're going to write entree or main dish, salad, soup, uh, dessert, 
bread, anything that is a category that you might put in your weekly menu plan. In fact, you want a weekly menu planner. There's one that I'm using all four weeks of this challenge. It's available by the way, and it's in our menu planning made easy ebook. There'll be a link to where you can get that ebook. It'll be in the description of this video. So go ahead and think about those ingredients in terms of different ways of presentation. I'm going to show you exactly how I fed my family for a week using those same three main ingredients and I use them in a whole lot of different ways. Now the bean of the week was black beans and boy our family just loves <laughs> black beans. I guess that was the same thing you used in week one. It right? was all right so same bean of the week for two weeks in a row guys. I'm sorry I'm going to make sure the last two weeks of the challenge that we use a different bean of the week but frankly it just worked out that way. So once again this week we have black beans as the bean of the week and I will remind you uh, if you missed how I actually deal with that whole bean of the week idea and making sure that I can save actually time and money on energy costs. Uh, that we covered in the first video of this series. And once again, don't forget to go back and watch that. If you haven't watched it, there'll be a link in the description of this video. The grain of the week was quinoa and we love quinoa. It has such a nice nutty flavor. And even though it's a little bit more expensive than yeah, rice, a lot more expensive than rice, but it's, it's, it's nice to have something different to, you know, to eat the, rather than just rice all the time. Now that's one of the things you want to look at if you're trying to do this and do it on a low budget. Yes. White rice is incredibly inexpensive, but you can buy brown rice in bulk and also get it for a very, very good price. The quinoa that I used in the menu this week, I actually found that at Sam's quite a while back and I think it was four pounds for $10, $2.50 a pound, a lot more than rice, yes, but for quinoa, it's very, very reasonable. You can also consider using barley or using millet as a grain to put other ingredients over the top of. So the whole idea here is break out of your preconceived box of what constitutes a grain and try some new grains. So let's head to the menu plan and see what Hope did for our family. All right, so potatoes, I promise you it's gonna show up in different ways. It showed up in two different entrees, hot stuff baked potatoes. We probably do this once a week, guys. It's like taco night for us. <laughs> we might have taco salad one night uh, per week, and then we might have hot stuff baked potatoes another night per week. The kids love it. Look, all you do is bake the potatoes, and then you put anything and everything that looks like it could possibly top a baked potato. <laughs> you put it out on the table in little bowls, and let everybody pick what they want. I guarantee you this is a winner, winner chicken dinner, except in our house because we're vegan, not chicken dinner. And <laughs> <No>. <laughs> all the kids are going to love it and everybody in the family is going to give it two thumbs up. It's kind of like having a potato bar. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Like, That's what it is. It's your own baked potato bar and you're having it once a week. It's a great way to use up odds and ends of stuff. You just throw it over the top of the baked potato. Southern style potatoes and green beans. I want to know in the comments section, did anybody else's mother make this for them when they were growing up? My mom did. She used little bits of ham or bacon in it, which of course is vegans. We don't. We use a little bit of liquid smoke instead of the actual meat. Uh, this is comfort food at its highest. Now, here's my tip. You got to get just enough liquid in there so that when you put it on the plate, it, it gives you a little liquid that you can sop it up with a really nice piece of bread or a dinner roll. Absolutely perfect. Yeah, it makes it kind of kind of <laughs> juicy that way. Uh, finally, the potatoes were mixed with some broccoli and some carrots, and she made that into a creamy, very tasty soup. And the potatoes showed up one more place. They were steak fries to go alongside of beet burgers two nights this week. The beet burgers, you may remember, I made last week. I made so much food last week that literally we did not even have to touch the beet burgers. So the beet burgers appear on the menu, but they are literally like a free spot in the middle of a bingo card. We didn't have to pay anything for the beet burgers because we'd already figured that into the cost of last week's menu. And we even had them for lunch when we had guests over on Sunday and they loved it. So the peppers Hope caramelized and she put those alongside the onions yes. and stuffed inside homemade pizza pockets okay. along with some homemade marinara sauce. Guys, homemade pizza pockets, so incredibly easy to make. 
All I do is make a batch of the regular bread dough that I make all the time anyway. You're gonna make little balls out of it, roll those balls out into about six or seven inch rounds, fill one half of it with whatever pizza toppings you want, fold the other half over, crimp the edges, stick it in a 375 oven for about 15 or 20 minutes until it's browned, and voila, you have homemade pizza pockets. They freeze really, really well too, so you can make them ahead of time, stick them in the freezer, and then just bring them out, pop them in a 350 oven for about five or 10 minutes just to warm through when you're ready to eat them. And the carrots she put into a ginger carrot soup. Mm -hmm. And oh my gosh, it was so, <laughs> so good. Very good. refreshing. You know, here's the thing. If you want a different way to eat carrots, when you roast carrots or you cook carrots, it brings out that natural sweetness far more than you would think that it would. And carrot soup, really good way to do it. Yeah, they're very sweet when you cook them. Mm -hmm. Now, speaking of soups, Hope made some really good lentil soup. It was an Italian version, and we just love, I love lentil soup. It has to be on my favorite list of soups. So we dished that out to the company that came over, which happened to be our oldest son, James, and his girlfriend, and they loved it too. Yeah, this is actually my original recipe, guys. It's one of my most requested recipes. And remember, if you're intrigued by these recipe ideas, there will be photos and recipe links on the website. I will make sure that there is a link to that blog post in the description of this video if you wanna go and grab the recipes. And Hope made a lot of salads for this week also. And uh, you can always get, you know, use grain-based salads. They not only go a long way, but you can also roll those up into a tortilla and put some fresh veggies and avocado chunks, mm. and they make a super quick lunch. Yeah, that's the thing. One of the things that, that I really want to encourage you to do when you're thinking about stretching the food that you have on hand is reimagine it in different ways in order to make it go for another meal. If you have just a little bit of that salad left, just rolling it up in tortillas and adding some more vegetables is going to stretch what would not normally feed your full, whole family to feed your whole family for lunch because you're adding just a few fresh ingredients with it. To top all this off, Hope made a very good batch of homemade wheat buns. And she makes those by grinding the grain and letting it rise and cooking that, you know, in the oven. How much is that? How long does that take to bake? Depends on what it is. Yeah. Dinner rolls are going to take you about 15, 20 minutes. A loaf of bread, maybe 30 minutes. But we serve those warm and oh boy, are they ever good. One of the other things I do, guys, is when I'm ready to do baking for the week, look, our stove upstairs, original to the house. 1958. It, uh, it's an electric oven. It's a wall oven. So it actually, you know, for being an oven that is that old, is energy efficient by the standards of that day because it doesn't take as long to heat up because it's all encased behind the wall. It's well insulated. But having said that, it does dramatically shoot up our electric usage when I'm using it. So I try, if at all possible, to cook using other lower energy means, but when you're baking bread and you got five loaves, it's gonna go into the larger oven. But I do watch the energy chart for that day, and when our hourly energy charges drop to their lowest, generally between noon and 4 p.m., that's when I'm gonna stick that bread in the oven. So if you have an hourly energy charge at your house, make sure you're looking at that chart and when you're ready to cook, do it when the energy costs are lowest. So now the big question is, did we stay within the $50 budget for this week? I'm gonna do my drum roll. The answer is no. <laughs> All right, here's why I went wrong. I told you I made one dramatic <laughs> critical fail on the menu plan and I actually made it last week and it was one of you that caught my error. Here is the error. Tell me, as you're listening, tell me in the comment section if you think you know what my error was both weeks. I'd love to know what you think. Here's what it was. I did not take into account a little habit that Larry and I have. And the habit is this. <laughs> One of you asked me, did you account for the amount of your daily pot of coffee? And I didn't. So I figured that in this week, the coffee made me go over by about $2. Uh, so uh, you know what? It wasn't too dramatic of a fail. And next week, guys, 
I'm gonna figure that $2 of coffee in and I am going to come in under $50 next week. So make sure that you are watching. <laughs> if you like this video, hit the thumbs yes. up. That helps the algorithms and kind of sends our video on down the road and other people can enjoy it that way. And just remember to head over to the website. That's where you'll see photos and links to Hope's wonderful recipes. And join us all month long as we talk about saving money on groceries. If you missed the first video in this series, it's right over there and you'll want to watch it next.